Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 12th, 2020, recorded around 1047 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropics right now, we do have a couple of things to discuss today. Uh, we are still in a little bit of a quiet period after Hurricane Delta made landfall uh, just a couple miles to the east of Cameron, Louisiana, that was impacted by Hurricane Laura. Uh, that now has translated into a remnant circulation that is now beginning to exit off the northeast coast of the United States. And then, of course, this will remain post-tropical then as it gets caught in the easternlies and out across the North Atlantic Basin. So it still has a long journey ahead of it. But now that uh, circulation, that warm core low-level center has weakened uh, post-tropical, still bringing, though, a lot of rain uh, to portions of the Northeast today and even some severe weather down there as well. But for the most part now, the threat associated uh, with Delta has now passed. Um, down here in the deep tropics, however, we are watching Invest Area 93L with a 30% chance over the next five days. This could pose a threat down the road for the Lesser Antilles in terms of heavy rainfall. Uh, not really expecting anything much more significant than that. Again, you know, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, etc. Yeah, you could have some heavier rain, you know, gusty winds from time to time, squally conditions. You know the drill with these tropical waves that come through. But we're not really expecting to see this really ramp up into anything significant. Now, that being said, though, if we go down here to the lower level and kind of the closer up view here, of 93L, you'll see a couple of very interesting components here today. So first of all, we'll stop this on the latest frame. We do have a large batch of showers and thunderstorms well off towards the east here. So you notice that uh, we have some sort of low-level spin, which we'll talk about here in a moment, but the convection is associated out here to the east of that spin. Now the reason for that is because we have strong upper-level winds cutting across like this, blowing uh, from the west to the east. So this is basically shearing these thunderstorms off towards the east of these the kind of the low level spin future of this system. Now this again is going to prohibit significant organization because you know of course still even this time of the year if we had perfect conditions we'd get something for sure to develop but there's just a lack of or I should say maybe a plethora, a wind shear to keep this from really taking off down here. Now, with that being said, one of the interesting things that we have been able to see today is that if we kind of back this up here, you can see what appears to be somewhat of a low-level sensor of circulation down in here. And we just have to look at the wind direction. We'll kind of slow this down here. Uh, but if you look at it, we have wind that is coming generally spiraling around here on the west side. You, you've got those westerly winds here, southerly winds down here, and seemingly wind over here kind of converging as well. Uh, so there seems to be maybe some semblance of a circulation if you kind of just follow this pattern around there might be a, an elongated circulation in there. And we'll play this uh, once again kind of here so you can see it. But it really has become evident here, especially with this arc cloud that's kind of racing out ahead of it. That, And you can see from the daytime heating, we're getting more cumulus clouds to develop down here. You can see how these low-level cloud features are getting pulled into whatever vortex is here. So... There is maybe some semblance of a kind of a centralized um, circulation with this, which would be very interesting. And we can actually see, you know, some shallower convection, you know, kind of developing uh, near that, you know, low level center, it, it appears. So this tells us that there is the potential that this, you know, if it can maintain deep convection, uh, for, you know, 6 to 12 hours and, you know, if this can really maintain itself and get a little bit better organized, we may be looking at a tropical depression or, you know, maybe even a tropical storm, uh, you know, today, tonight, whatever. Now, 
again, upper level wind should keep this really in check and should keep this from organizing significantly. So again, we're not really, you know, seeing any of the signs that's going to point towards a major, you know, hurricane or whatever barreling down on the islands. But it is something to be mindful of that, you know, even a, a weak depression storm, even a tropical wave is, you know, people know down there in the islands could bring, you know, flash flooding concerns, mudslides, you know, gusty winds, whatever. So you have to be ready. There's going to be inherent risk for the islands over the next couple of days uh, as this, you know, tropical wave or whatever this is to, you know, at that time to move through. Um, but again, the hurricane center right now is really only giving this uh, about a 30% chance of development. And why? Because of the strong upper level wind that is cutting across, uh, you know, really coming out from uh, the Eastern Pacific, kind of cutting across like this and just shearing uh, what's ever in here and just kind of tearing it apart. So, you know, it's not exceptionally strong, you know, 60 knots a shear, but it's enough to kind of keep it down in check right now. So that is some of the good news going forward. Now, we can look at this in, in a couple of different ways, and, and we'll first take a look here at the GFS 850 vorticity. This is a spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what you're really looking for is, you know, these darker shades of red here in a centralized, you know, kind of circular area. And you don't really see that. Again, you know, you, you can kind of see here, this is some energy here, shortwave trough energy associated, uh, you know, some of it, you know, associated with the remnants there of Delta. Uh, but here is Invest Area 93L. Again, several hundred miles right now to the east of the Los Antilles. Now, again, you can see how the GFS tries to develop a weak area of vorticity down here. I mean, this isn't a very large system at all. I mean, it, it's, you know, not a very big system at all. And it, it will be, you know, something to, you know, be mindful of over the next couple of days because, you know, if this can form somewhat of an inner core structure, or, you know, that closed circulation, yeah, there's definitely a chance that this could be a tropical storm, you know, depression or storm on approach into the Lesser Antilles. Now, again, not really expecting a very strong storm, but, you know, 40, you know, 45, 50 mile per hour wind, you know, that could easily, you know, cause, you know, something to, you know, happen, you know, that that could easily cause, you know, isolated tree damage, etc. So, you know, there is the potential, like I said, for inherent problems here. Now, if we look at the upper level wind pattern here on the GFS forecast, this is the, the wind pattern about 200 millibars in the atmosphere, valid as of 2 p.m. this afternoon. And we can really see what our steering features are right now and, and our pattern in general. We have this broad upper level anti-cyclone right now across the Gulf of Mexico associated with an area of high pressure bringing... Uh, mostly clear conditions over the next couple of days for portions of Florida. Uh, but we also have strong upper level wind cutting across here, just the strong upper level wind. We also have a potential vorticity stream or PV stream, and we can see how that's a very sharp kind of trough in here. And, and that's your axis right in through there. So this is causing a lot of strong vertical wind shear uh, kind of over the top of the storm, over top of the system. And that's really going to prohibit significant development over the next couple of days. And if we only move this forward, it only really gets worse because this PV streamer is moving actually uh, east, eastward here. So it's not propagating westward and kind of allowing uh, a more favorable uh, environment. It's causing a less favorable environment. We still have this pretty big shear kind of area through here. So we're really kind of not seeing the signs of significant uh, potential here. But I do want you to pay attention to what happens in the Caribbean. This is, you know, getting out there hour, we'll go out to hour 150. You know, this is October 18th. So, you know, this is, you know, down the road by, you know, a little bit more than five days. And this is as far as we're going to go. But here's the pattern, you know, by, you know, the, the you know, roughly about the 18th year. The pattern starts to become more favorable in the Caribbean. We start to see a in kind of an anticyclonic flow across the Gulf of Mexico, or not the Gulf, the Caribbean here. 
And if we look at the GFS, uh, you know, relative humidity, we can really see what's getting ready to illustrate here. Now, again, this is our tropical wave, and you can see that low here is situated on the uh, kind of the west side of all of that, or the east side, basically, of all that convection. And what you're getting here, again, is a strong shear that's going to help to push some dry air into the storm as well. But you'll notice that this moisture, it doesn't necessarily get lost. It comes across uh, into, you know, the lesser Antilles. So even if this isn't a well-developed tropical storm or whatever by that time, there is the threat for locally heavy rainfall, you know, even as far into, you know, the Dominican Republic. And we can see kind of just a large plume of moisture now. Uh, you know, after that time, we start to see this moisture stream in across the, the Caribbean here. And again, we have pretty strong trade winds kind of blowing across to, to the north of this, slower trade winds to the south. So we get an area of enhanced vorticity down here uh, near South America. So there is some inherent potential that, you know, maybe after the next five days or so, that there is going to be something to monitor in the Caribbean for potential development. Now, whether or not this is the remnants here of 93L uh, or whatever comes of that, or whether or not this is a completely new system, uh, that has to be ironed out. Uh, again, it's too early to be speculating details beyond, you know, the five-day realm, but the pattern, you know, just given the fact that, you know, we are still in the midst of the, the hurricane season, October, again, is still a pretty busy month all the way up and through, you know, the latter part of October, you know, so this is, you know, getting mid to late October by this point on the GFS forecast. So it is something to watch, you know, again, hurricane season runs until November 31st. So it's important to have a hurricane preparedness plan, uh, you know, just in case, because we're not done yet. And uh, again, we have, you know, 93 L to watch first, and then potentially a Caribbean system down the road, uh, kind of whatever comes of that. So this is going to be important to watch uh, as we go forth with time. Now, a large part in, in what's going to be happening, uh, again, just to kind of look at some potential going down the road, this is the upper ocean heat content here, the tropical cyclone heat potential map developed from NOAA and the Hurricane Research Division. Um, but we can really see that, again, you know, even after all of the storms that have come through this region and after Hurricane Delta, uh, you know, kind of traversed in through here, we still have a relatively very high upper ocean heat content environment uh, down here in the uh, Caribbean. Again, you know, not much has been taken out of here. This area is still very primed. So if you do get something, you know, to develop somewhere in here and it tracks, you know, somewhere into there, there is still a tremendous amount of upper ocean heat content for a system to take advantage of. So just because we had Hurricane Delta, which was a powerful Category 4 down there, it was very small. It was a very small storm, and thus it did not upwell a lot of cool water. And also for the fact that because, you know, it didn't spend a lot of time down there, you know, it was moving relatively quickly. This didn't get a chance to upwell a, a lot of cooler water. So we're kind of just seeing that there's a large expansive area of warmth down here still. And that extends, you know, right all the way up here, you know, across into the southern Gulf off the Florida coast, you know. So there's things to be mindful of. You know, even out here near the Lesser Antilles, there's still a lot of upper ocean heat content. So, you know... Again, you know, not trying to scare anybody, not trying to say anything here, not trying to apply anything, but, you know, the overall general message is that, you know, this area is still very primed for tropical cyclone development, and if something can get go, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, if something can get going in that environment, it certainly would not take uh, a lot necessarily for something to organize uh, quite substantially. Now, again, we can also kind of see here that in the uh, 200 millibar velocity potential map here, uh, we can very clearly see that where we were, this is the Mount Julian oscillation look here, and all of this blue here, all this positive anomaly is highlighted in blue, 
And this is where we came from, this, you know, very uh, kind of anomalous blue region suggesting that we had a lot of higher uh, velocity potential. We went into a, a kind of a, a dull phase, another active phase, dull phase right now. We see where the GFS forecast is now uh, with the Madden Julian oscillation positioned over the west, uh, you know, Western Pacific and Eastern Pacific. And then there's hints that this might try to slice back over the Atlantic Basin. And we can very clearly see that in the MGO forecast week two, that this now comes over the Eastern Pacific and then probably passes once again into the Atlantic, um, you know, by, you know, late October. So we're far from done yet uh, in the hurricane season. Again, we still almost have, you know, we have about another month and a half left to go in the hurricane season. So hold on. Uh, you know, of course, you know, we do have a couple of things, you know, to track right now, but uh, as it stands, uh, right now, nothing very significant threatening on the horizon, but, you know, we have to keep our eyes out. So that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow morning.